Hello and welcome to the Cat Virus channel. This film is one of the Cat Virus Veterinary School series. It is primarily for veterinary professionals, but it does contain a message for cat guardians too. Disclaimer, I accept no responsibility for any actions you may take as a consequence of watching this film. If you have a sick cat, please consult a qualified veterinary surgeon. This video is part of a series entitled Lessons from Luca, sponsored by Maria Bonino. Luca was a cat who had non-effusive FIP. As a consequence of a poor choice of external veterinary laboratory, he was subjected to many more blood samples than he required, and his guardian, Maria, ran up a huge bill in her quest to find out what was wrong with her beloved cat. In this film, I'm going to discuss step four of the non-effusive FIP diagnosis algorithm. That is to say, sending blood samples to an external veterinary laboratory. You may wish to download and print out a copy of the non-effusive diagnostic algorithm to have beside you during this film. If so, please press pause and go to www.catvirus.com. Click on the downloads page and you'll find the flowchart available in many languages, thanks to our heroic band of translators. The algorithm in English is usually the one that's most up to date. Lesson one is to use a good veterinary laboratory that knows about FIP. Lesson two is to send the correct sample to the external laboratory and to ask for the correct tests. Send blood for coronavirus antibody testing not an effusion, and in contrast, send an effusion for coronavirus RT-PCR testing. Don't send blood. Luca was rescued from a Los Angeles rescue group on Sunday the 23rd of September 2012. He was almost nine weeks old and he'd already been neutered. On Monday the 9th of September 2013, when Luca was 14 months old, his guardian, to use her words, noticed that Luca was not as enthusiastic about his dinner as he normally was. But he ate pretty much all of it, so she didn't think it was a big deal. Maybe just a case of an upset stomach. Maria took Luca to the first of many veterinary surgeons, and quite correctly, that veterinary surgeon included a test for coronavirus antibodies in the initial screen. This video is about step four of the FIP diagnostic algorithm. Steps one and two of the non-effusive FIP diagnostic flowchart for Luca will be dealt with in detail in other videos. However, I will go through them briefly. First, he had an opportunity to become infected with coronavirus because he was from a rescue shelter. And he also, at the time of his clinical signs, lived in a house with three other cats, so there's a tick for that box. Second part, was he a purebred cat? Well, he came from a rescue shelter, but he could have been pedigree. He certainly looked like a Russian blue. He was 14 months old, which is obviously less than two years, and he had had a booster vaccination in the weeks coming up to his first clinical signs, so the stress question was also answered in the affirmative. Step two of the algorithm, clinical signs, were not so clear cut. He ticked only three of the nine parameters, and those signs, anorexia, pyrexia and lethargy, are common to a huge number of feline diseases. I don't know if the attending veterinarian checked for intraocular signs or an enlarged mesenteric lymph node, so I've put question marks there. I hope you don't mind the purring, that's Tommy, my cat, who's sitting on me just then. Okay, so the attending vet then did absolutely the correct thing. He or she took blood samples and included a screen for coronavirus antibodies and toxoplasma antibodies. The samples were not tested in-house, which they usually would be in step three of the algorithm. They were sent to an external laboratory, in this case, Antec. Antec was a very unfortunate choice of laboratory, as you will see. Let's have a look at the results. 
First, they have the wrong abbreviation for feline coronavirus. FCV is the internationally recognised abbreviation for feline Khaleesi virus. The correct feline coronavirus abbreviation is FCOV. I pointed this out to Antet back in 2009 and received the reply that, essentially, it always done it that way and that to change it, in other words to correct it, would confuse their clients. Personally, I would be a lot more confused by a wrong abbreviation than one I wasn't used to. I have confirmed that, as of 2018, they continue to use the wrong abbreviation. The next problem, and this is a much more serious one, is that the starting dilution of the sample was 1 in 400. This is far too big a dilution. Most laboratories begin somewhere between 1 in 10 and 1 in 25. A dilution of 1 in 400 will mean that Antec will get a lot of false negative results. We don't know if Luca had coronavirus antibodies because he wasn't tested elsewhere for them, but he did have histopathologically confirmed non-effusive FIP, and it is close to inconceivable that he would have been feline coronavirus antibody negative. So while I cannot say that this result was a false negative, I strongly suspect that it was, and the consequence was that Luca's veterinarians hunted around for a diagnosis other than FIP, thinking they ruled FIP out, wasting valuable time that could have been used to treat him and putting him through unnecessary tests and costing his guardian a fortune. The third thing wrong about this test was that they offered a 7B ELISA test to confirm FIP diagnosis. To be fair, I'm not sure that they're still doing this, but when Luca was ill, they were, and at that time the 7B test had long been discredited. The tale is that molecular biologists sequencing laboratory strains noticed a deletion in the 7B gene in laboratory strains called feline enteric coronavirus, FECV, but that the 7B gene was intact in so-called FIP laboratory strains. That itself was strange. It would have meant that an insertion would be needed for FIP to develop rather than a mutation or a deletion which are much more common. It turned out that the 7B deletion was a laboratory artifact. If you grow feline coronavirus in cell culture, it doesn't need an intact 7B gene, so mutants with deletions in the 7B gene can grow happily in cell culture, whereas they cannot in a cat. Feline coronavirus is an RNA virus. It mutates, deletes and recombines all the time. That's what RNA viruses do. Anyway, a test was developed based on this laboratory artefact. Dr. Melissa Kennedy and colleagues published a paper which evaluated the 7B antibody test, and she concluded her abstract by saying, seropositivity for this protein, i.e. the 7B protein, was not specific for a diagnosis of FIP. Some years ago, I invited Antec to take part in a study of feline coronavirus antibody tests, but they declined. The results of that study were published in JFIMS, and you can see which tests perform best on the feline coronavirus antibody page of my www.catvirus.com website. To find that page, go to the catvirus.com website, choose the What is FIP page, Scroll down till you find the FECOV antibody link and when you press that link it'll come up in a new tab. The contents of the page are listed at the top. The page describes the uses of feline coronavirus antibody tests and how to interpret the results. There are a list of feline coronavirus antibody tests which are available and whether or not I recommend them. If you scroll down to the foot of the page, you will find the list of veterinary laboratories that I recommend. This list is not exhaustive, it's only the ones that I know about personally. So if you are a veterinary laboratory person and want to tell me about your own laboratory, do feel free to contact me.
The page might look a little different from the one shown here because it gets updated regularly. There is a direct link to the FECOV antibody page in the notes below. The test which performed best overall in the JFIMS published study was the coronavirus immunocom. This is a test that can be performed in a veterinary practice by any reasonably competent person, so you wouldn't need access to an external veterinary laboratory. You can contact Len Small to find out how to obtain the immunocom in your country. The best performing of the rapid immunomigration tests was the feline F corona from Burbach. Now this is where I have a message for any cat guardians who might still be listening and have not been bored to death thus far. It is you who are paying for the laboratory test for your cat. So you have the right to ask that your cat sample be sent to a laboratory that knows about feline coronavirus and FIP. OK, back to Luca's story. On Saturday the 14th of September 2013, Luca was given an ultrasound at a hospital. The veterinarian on duty speculated that he had FIP. The veterinary surgeon sent samples for an RT-PCR test. Guess where they were sent? Yep, Antec. And once again, Antec appeared to rule out FIP for Luca, a cat proven to have had FIP. Well, how's that possible, you're probably asking yourself. Simple. The wrong sample was sent. Luca didn't have an effusion, so a blood sample was sent. A blood sample should never be sent for coronavirus RT-PCR testing. Even if the laboratory asks you to send blood, RT-PCR on a blood sample is not useful. Most cats with FIP are negative, as Luca was, and some cats without FIP can be transiently positive. To be fair to Antec, they are not alone in offering this test. There are even veterinary schools who should know better doing exactly the same thing. For example, here is the sample submission form from North Carolina and this one from the veterinary school in Lisbon, Portugal. This is the table I made of all the laboratory results of Luca. You can see that his hematocrit was declining sharply over the course of his disease. I'll be discussing this more in another video. MCV would have increased if he'd been making you red blood cells. He wasn't. He had the non-regenerative anemia or chronic disease that we commonly see in FIP. And here I just have to have another go at Antec. Look at the results on October the 3rd, sandwiched between two results from IDEX. All I can say is, really? Really? For that day only, Luca's hematocrit increased, his lymphocytes jumped up, and his albumin globulin ratio became 0 0.8, a level which rules out FIP. Just before he died of FIP? Really? This begs the question of whether you can trust any results from that laboratory, not just the coronavirus FIP results. To finish off, let us summarise the lessons from Luca that we have covered today. First, use a good veterinary laboratory that knows about FIP, and if you are a cat guardian, you will be paying for the test, and you have the right to ask for your cat sample to be sent to a reputable laboratory. As I mentioned before, a list of recommended laboratories can be found on catvirus.com on the coronavirus antibody page and the link is in the notes below this video. Second, once you've chosen a good laboratory, get the right test done. In other words, a coronavirus antibody test on blood, not effusion, and a coronavirus RT-PCR test on the effusion, but not the blood. I give my deepest gratitude to Maria Bonino for allowing Luca's story to be used to help other cats for supplying his laboratory results and for sponsoring this video. This video honours the memory of Luca and its purpose is to try to prevent other cats 
from going through what he went through. Finally, I'd like to give a big thanks to Mike at Coastal Launch Services for his gorgeous voiceover at the end of this video. If you found this video useful, please like it, share it and become a subscriber to my channel and become a website subscriber at catvirus.com. Again, the link is in the notes. Thank you for your attention and God bless you and your cats. Bye bye. Catvirus.com Helping cats to get rid of viruses.